Historically, what have we learned about applying group one pulmonary arterial hypertension medications to patients with group three pulmonary hypertension? There have been many studies through the years, many of them open label, small series, very few randomized controlled studies. I'll show you a series of tables that summarizes all these different studies and they're nicely color coded so that you can tell if they were positive, negative or neutral studies. So green is the suggestion of a benefit, salmon or red, however this is showing for you, are negative studies and the ones in yellow or orange are, are studies that are neutral. I'm not going to go through each of these. Suffice it to say, these have been very small studies. A variety of different PAH medications have been tried, have been trialed in patients with interstitial lung disease with mixed signals, as you can see from the green, the salmon, and the yellow. There have been further studies, and these are some additional studies. Most of this is salmon or red colored, so most of these were negative studies. Once again, mostly small, some of them larger studies. If you look at the, the Ragu study from 2013, for example, this was ambrosantin, but this was studied for the effects of ambrosantin as an antifibrotic, not for its effects as an anti-PH therapy. More recently, we, we have a couple of studies that I'll get to, into towards the end of this table, but this table in particular summarizes the few randomized control studies that there are out there. The ones to focus on would be the STEP study. Dave Ziesman was the first author. This looked at sildenafil in patients with DLCOs less than 35% are predicted, so a group of patients that were enriched for pulmonary hypertension. And even though this was a negative study, there were cer certain secondary endpoints like oxygenation, and quality of life measures that were positive. The CORTE study was of both Santin, 60 patients. We're getting into bigger trials now. And this was a decidedly negative study. No efficacy seen there. This study over here that I was privileged to be the PI on was the RISE RIP study looking at rear cigarette in various forms of idiopathic interstitial pneumonia. And unfortunately, this study was stopped early by the Data Safety Monitoring Committee for increased harm in the treatment arm with increased mortality and increased hospitalizations. This more recent study is of, right at the bottom over here, is of ambulatory inhaled nitric oxide. This was a phase two study. Once again, I was privileged to be the uh, lead investigator on this. This was published in CHEST in uh, about September of 2020. And this was a positive study based on the MBPA. This is actigraphy and MBPA is moderate to vigorous physical activity with less of a decrement in the placebo arm versus the treatment arm. Thank you all very much.